All right, guys, this is Adam. I'm here with Casey Samsell, and this is Wine Now, Sweat Later. Back so soon. <laughs> I know, right? We just got to do this on Sunday, right? Yeah, you know, it went relatively, it went well, considering all my brain fog. We did a great job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. <laughs> when people have brain fog, they usually say brain frog by accident. Uh, that's a trend I've noticed in uh, practice. <laughs> um, what is that one thing that I, I make everybody try to say? It's, uh, I keep doing it, like every time I um, see somebody I know, it's um, three free throws. Oh, yeah. Say it. <laughs> yeah, free, free throws. Yeah, three free throws. That's a tough one. <laughs> Isn't it? It's beautiful. I love it. I get everybody with it. They're all yeah. like, oh, I could do that, and then no. <laughs> I've had practice though, so you can't stop me on that one. That's awesome. <laughs> we so, have some cool topics today, and we just kind of put this together last minute, which yeah. I think that always goes well when you don't rehearse things. It comes out better. Yeah. But I know today we were really going to talk about um, a, a packing list, which is really important for us. And then what was the other thing we were going to mention? Uh, choosing a coach, right? Yeah. Yes. Just some like random reasons to choosing a coach that's going to be the best for you and just the best in general. So, um, and then also that, that list of, uh, you know, kind of like peak week stuff and show day stuff, just everything to have in your suitcase um, yeah, yeah. for show day. So you're not forgetting anything. And just in case shit hits the fan, you are prepared every way, shape or form. So I figured that'd be beneficial to get out and uh, just share with everyone. I agree. So, what do you think is like one of the number one things that competitors forget to take to the venue with them? Honestly, I think the biggest thing can uh, really be like a phone charger. That's one that my girls always ask me for. So I usually have like two or three of them because I'm kind of like a stage dad. So um if, if anyone knows me, I like always have my backpack with me and that's kind of to keep anything that anyone might need, you know? Yeah. Um, I have found that a lot of, you know, it just so happens that I run into a lot of girls that forget their number, their pin. Yep. So either they'll be like in line and their pin will be in their bag or their pin will be next door at their hotel. They got to run back and get it or it's hooked to their other suit that they couldn't wear or whatever it was. So that was the first thing on my list is to always make sure that you pack your pin, pack your competitor number. You are definitely right about that because uh, two of my girls couldn't find theirs at Nationals for a hot minute. and uh, Yeah, it's just something you really don't think about, you know? I think girls, uh, when they get the pin, they're typically in a meeting and they're looking to see who they might be up against. That girl looks like she's my height and she looks, right. mean, you know, and uh, yeah, I totally, and yeah, I totally get that. And I, I've been there. I've been in a lineup where I had to pick my pin with my class and uh, with clothes on, like I, I look like nothing. And I was just like, I'm going to get smoked by these guys. So it's a, it's, I can't believe I did remember where my pin was. <laughs> Yeah, either that or bring a permanent marker and write it on your forehead. Yeah. <laughs> you can get away with that in bodybuilding, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> like a branded horse. Oh, my God. Okay. So, this list is long. So, whoever is watching, if you, um, if you are a bikini competitor, um, maybe even along the lines of a figure competitor or women's physique, um, this might benefit you, um, you know, just replacing bikini with the word physique and figure. Um <laughs> grab a pen and paper and start writing. So my first thing on the list- Below in our comments too, we'll put a, a list together. Yeah, we can, yep. absolutely. Yep. Um, so the second thing on my list after your number pin is an extra bikini. So anything can happen. So you maybe it gets too hot or too cold and the, the gems fall off or um, you know your tan stains it too bad because it's a light suit or um, the connector breaks, you've got it, then that way you have an extra suit. Or, um, and I actually even suggest if you're going to bring an extra suit, that it be the contrasting color. So if you're going to bring, if you bring a red suit, also bring a blue suit or a purple suit. Um, so that way that when you 
go on stage or you see the stage, if that background is really, really, really red, like there's no contrast to the red, you wear a contrast to the red, blue or purple. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yes. Or you notice a lot of girls are wearing blue and you think you want to stand out from the mix. It might be a good time to make that switch decision. Yeah. I think blue was the color at nationals. I saw yeah. so many girls in blue. Blue and teal. Yep. Yep. Or, um, yep. So it says, yeah, these bikinis should be contrasted in the color just in case that everyone is wearing close to that color. Okay. So um, two pairs of posing heels. Not always necessary, but again, anything could happen. You like your 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 heels are older. You could break the heel. You could knock that little plastic mat off the bottom. You know, whatever it is. Um, if somebody steals what you know steals one of your posing heels because you know they don't have theirs. They forgot theirs. You know what I mean? Anything could happen. I always bring double of everything. Um, and then I have the extra jewelry too because jewelry easily breaks. So um, just make sure that you have extra jewelry on hand, just in case. Um, and your tanning products. We know that like taking tanning products with us because time is of the essence. So, like schedules can change. Sometimes they'll take bikini from last and put them up second, you know what I mean? So like when timing is crucial and you have to get backstage and be ready and you, you know, you can't wait in line to get your tan fixed, then you can handle it yourself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so nice. Um, oh, wet ones. So that's just to like, you know, um, just for general, like keeping your hands clean or wiping, you know, wiping your jewelry off or, or, you know, anything, wet ones always. That way you can, you're not like touching people or touching your clothes or anything like that and getting anything on your clothes. A lot of people get really black fingertips backstage. So that's always great to, you know, cover that and, you know, wipe that excess off. Because great, because that looks really funny really when you go to dismiss yourself on stage. Yes. <laughs> and then we have, um, so uh, some competitors use, you know, their pump up goodies, so like pump up sugars and salts and stuff. So, so I see a lot of people using like sour gummies and, and things like that, or candy or chocolate or whatever it is. Um, and that's to, that's to each their own, whatever they're prescribed to, you know, so. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Don't forget that stuff. Um, that includes like, you know, your, maybe you have like a pump up supplement, uh, a liquid carb or, uh, something to pump up with anything, pre-workout, whatever it is, whatever gets you going up there. Um, your extra meals. So you never know. I remember one time I was supposed to go on stage at the New York pro around, um, it was like 11 AM and I didn't end up going on until about 4 PM for rejudging. So, uh, and I didn't have any extra meals with me. I ended up having to eat. Um, I was on a meal plan. I was used to just the, the regular foods, whole foods, a lot of the same foods all the time. Um, and I had, you know, in that amount of time, I had shrunk significantly because my metabolism was, I was dry. I was, you know, I was flat. So I just felt like I couldn't get a pump, nothing. So I went and I grabbed a Nathan's chicken sandwich which I wasn't a huge fan of at the time, but I'll never regret it because it got me nice and full for the stage. But um, there's not always a Nathan's, there's not always a food stand. So bring your extra food, bring extra, at least like two extra meals. My clients always uh, hate me for how much food I have them bring, but it's a, it's a precaution for if they're on late. And on occasion, they'll eventually get to thank me if they're with me long enough that we, they do enough shows where we hit that one where it's just like you said, supposed to be on at 11, on at 4. And uh, yeah. this happened to my clients at the Dallas Europa. They were, I mean, I can't even comprehend how late they were on. I think it was 7 p.m. and their competitor meeting was at 10 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. Actually, I had a client in that in that show as well. And I remember she just waited all day, all day, all day. So, um, and another thing too, if the show is small, sometimes you don't even have time. You know, if the show like they'll because they'll drag out prejudging. People pay for those tickets. You know, so they'll drag out the prejudging, and before you know it, you got to be right back for finals. And and uh, sometimes you don't have time to go get food. Yeah, so, yeah. That too. Um, obviously, uh, your water. Bring some extra water and bring um, your plastic utensils. 
Um, you know, because I don't, you probably don't want to eat with your nasty tan germy hands that have been all over people and all over yourself and all over. That freaks me out. So. Right. Done with that. Um, clips and hair ties. That's just in case, you, like you know, if you're you don't want your hair to get too greasy. Like if you're waiting backstage for a long time and they're spraying that oil and stuff backstage, you don't want your hair to get greasy and chunky and gross. Pull your hair back and let it down, you know, right before you go on stage. You don't want it to go flat either. Um, you know, and especially if you get it done too, you want to make sure that you take it down and pull it back because it can, it can get greasy. And then when you pull it down, it's so heavy, it goes flat. Mm -hmm. So I've learned that the hard way as well. Um, I have here a toothbrush and toothpaste. So, um, that just means like if you're eating and stuff like that and you, you know, take, you have another long day, whatever it is, or you can just bring like one of those, I have those little wispy things, the little tiny things with like the little tiny ball, the little mint ball. And I just clean my teeth sometimes before I go on. Yep. Just in case I have food and stuff kind of hanging out in there. Absolutely. Clean mouth will give you a lot of confidence. Yes. <laughs> um, and for me, one big thing, and I'm sure that you have seen this a dozen times, a dozen thousand times, um, girls should bring their own lipstick. Because if you're getting your makeup done at 4.30 in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, and you're not going on stage until one o'clock, you will have eaten meals and drink a lot of water and things like that, and your lipstick will be gone by the time you get to the stage. And if your lipstick is gone, you're going to look like you have no lips on stage. Mm -hmm. So I would say go for like a deep mauve color, and or you know you can kind of go a little bit to the red side but bring your own lipstick so you can reapply right before you go on I, I know a lot of cool makeup artists who have let my girls take theirs at least but a lot of times you won't get that lucky and, right. and that's probably going back to the one thing people forget that's huge people always forget to bring that it makes a huge difference on stage when the when the judge is looking at your face and watching you glow up like you want to you want to have those nice those bold lips so that you know you have those different layers of your face and you have those different the structure in your face and it just has a beautiful appeal to it too it's very feminine so mm -hmm. and a little bit more drama too i actually when i do my lipstick i put brown on so I go brown, brown, and then I put like a like a mauve on top, and it it just pops so nicely with my makeup and my hair. Um, and I actually even bring like extra makeup. So, um, like I'll bring like extra bronzer, and I'll bring um, like I'll bring my brushes for my eyes and stuff like that, just in case like something happens, like somebody accidentally like it's water on you, or you're sweating, or whatever the case may be. So, because I'm telling you, like when uh, the girls are already ready, they paid $150 for the makeup um, and hair and stuff like that. And the tan is another hundred something dollars um, if you get it done by the company there. Um, and something gets messed up, that is going to bug the typical competitor. That's going to bug them out. So if you have everything prepared, and even though you shouldn't have to deal with it, you can deal with it. You know what I mean? So you can get on, they can get on the stage as confident as possible. Absolutely. Um, flat iron, curling iron, just because you never know. Um, hairspray and dry shampoo. And next one, next thing is the cell phone charger. Yep. <laughs> um, flip flops. And um, something to lay on comfortably. Sometimes I'll just bring a blanket or sometimes I'll just steal a pillow from the hotel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very notorious for taking the pillows from the hotel. I always take them back, but um, you just never know. Your resistance bands. I've seen so many girls forget their bands. And then um, there's, I mean, there's been a couple cases where my girls, like, they couldn't find anybody that would let them borrow their bands because apparently, like, you know, I, you, you, everybody should help one another at this point. If, you know, you're ready to get on stage, nothing's going to change that dramatically. No. Yeah. You know, so if somebody needs to pump up, let them pump up. Um, salt. I always bring salt with me ever since my pro debut with you. Yep. <laughs> the magic you of salt. Wrong that, with you know. having extra salt. So. Yeah. Because that, it was so crazy because I remember I, I didn't, I didn't have that feeling like I wanted the salt. I wanted to dry out and that wasn't, that was the backwards case of it. So, um, especially since I was ready for the show. So, um, I remember I didn't feel very full and you told me to have a little bit of salt. So I did. And I had some of my brownie brittle 
pumped up and went on stage and I felt pretty damn good. So you remember the people looking at us when we did that? It was like we were doing witchcraft back. I know it was like magic, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this also. There was a certain coach who had a big team that doesn't really exist anymore, but uh he had given his uh client um I think a diuretic that she had never had or some kind of medication and uh she started throwing up violently backstage not I think you might have uh I think that was the next day it was, it was the amateurs and I was back there because it was I the remember, yeah I remember something crazy going down at the Pittsburgh Pro yeah it was so crazy seeing that <laughs> yeah and I've actually I've witnessed a lot of different things like that too um, I was uh, down in Florida for a show and some girl, um, she passed out on the toilet. They had to dig her out, throw her on the floor, um, give her a little bit of water, a little bit of salt, and she didn't even make it to the stage. You know, she had to go to the hospital. Just push that dehydration so much, right? Yep. Yep. Um, so um, it says here next, a cheap standing mirror. So I got mine from Walmart for like 10 bucks. But um, I mean, oftentimes they'll have mirrors and stuff backstage. Now they're pretty good with that. They didn't used to have mirrors all the time. No. But, um, no. If you really need a mirror, make sure you just grab a $10 one from Walmart and you can take it with you. Prop it up backstage. It's so nice on. to have that because people, that's the one thing people aren't too nice about sharing typically is that. Yep, that's the one thing. It is. Yep, they have to be in it 100% of the time. Yep. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is going to seem crazy, but it's actually come in handy a couple times. So a cheap set of press on nails. So if you break your nail because you're rushing around and stuff, you know, like say Friday night, you don't have time to go get it done. Saturday morning, you don't have time to go get it done. Um, if it really is bugging your confidence that you think that that broken nail is going to make a huge impact, it's not going to, but sometimes it is a confidence factor. Press on nails. Done. I love that. I have a sewing kit added to that as well as kind okay. of an emergency item in case your um, suit breaks and also safety pins. Yep, yeah, that was my next one, bobby pins and safety pins. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and that will also work for your, your suits and everything and sometimes even your jewelry. Yep. Right, so then I have a page called Extra. So um, this says, your MPC card and your driver's license. That was the one of the first things on my list was uh, yep. was that. Yep, gotta have it. Um, your extensions, if you wear them. Um, shower necessities, camera, your supplements, um, dark towels, uh, wash dark towels and washcloths and bed sheets. Your tanning clothes and robes. Um, so it would be like dark pants that are kind of light. Um, fabric and long sleeve shirts. Um, and then uh, like feminine products, boom. Scissors, shower cap, exfoliating, scrub, cash. Just yep. in case, because if people are traveling, sometimes the credit cards will shut down. Always have cash with you. Um, Pedialyte and coconut water. I like to like, I like to rehydrate a little bit afterwards with coconut water just because it tastes, tastes good and it actually kind of hits the spot. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll have eight ounces of coconut water. Um, an umbrella, because you don't want to look like a cheetah if it starts raining and then worry about your tan and stuff. That's a huge one. Yeah. Um, and then teeth whitening strips, uh, the mini first aid kit. Um, and then paper cups. So use them to drink out of or use them in the bathroom. Yep. <laughs> so that is my list there. Did I forget anything? Man, I think you nailed everything. It was just in a little bit of a different order than mine, which uh, I think the only thing we might not have hit, I think you said bikini bite. I was going to add posing oil to that just in case. Um, yep. And then I sometimes have my girls bring flip flops and they can pump up in those and then maybe put their heels on last minute. Because you yep. might be standing forever until your class is actually on. And the last yeah. thing you really want is your feet hurting before right. you go on. Exactly. Totally agree. And um, and 
my advice is don't get in your heels too soon because it's just, sometimes it just sets everything off and your feet are uncomfortable. So if you don't like the heels, don't, you don't need to get into them two hours prior. It can make you pretty miserable. (laughs) Yeah. Well, for me, I think I, I don't know if this is a bad habit or a good habit, but, um, I usually just like kind of relax backstage, like super, super relax. Um, and then right when they, you know, right when they call us up, that's when I kind of put my jewelry in and then I, you know, I slowly morph into everything, kind of check myself over, you know, one more time. Cause then usually got about, I usually have about like 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes because, um, of my last name in the lineup. So, um, that'll give me a little bit of time to even have some more quick carbs if I need some. Um, and then I can pump up right afterwards. So, um, for me, that works well, but for some people, it might not. Anybody with the last name that starts with A or B or C, maybe not. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anything before S, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So this is the big one. All right. Choosing a coach. Yes. <laughs> this is so fun. Okay. So I have for the very first thing on choosing a coach is just you need to know what your budget is. But then you also need to know that a good coach is not going to be cheap. That's very true. Yeah. Um, you know, because you'll see like newer coaches in the industry that they'll pr- their prices will be a little bit lower um, because they have to make a name for themselves and they're still learning and things like that. You know, they're aspiring, you know, long-term career coaches. So it's going to be a little bit of a different run than it would be to go with an experienced coach um, with some certificates and, and things underneath their um under their name and and, uh, uh, everything else. Definitely. Certifications, uh, degrees. Um, And also then uh, I have next what you, what your approach is. So like philosophy, a lot of people ask like, what's your philosophy on prep? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Just do it. (laughs) That's my philosophy. (laughs) Um, No, uh, but like an approach, like say, you know, if you're used to doing macros and you're very fluent in macros, um, you know, and you want to try a new approach, like a meal plan, something different, um, then you need to find a coach that is, you know, very fluent in meal plans. Mm-hmm. Um, because that, honestly, that's, you know, both are a little bit complicated to start out and you need to understand them both in order to, to be confident with them. So you've got to communicate with your coach and develop a, an approach that's going to work for you. So you have to select a coach that will work with you on the approach that you want. Right. Um, And then I said, uh, so natural or enhanced approach. So there are some coaches out there that I feel would just with a, you know, flick of their finger, just pop their athletes on whatever they think that they need rather than giving it a good, you know, good go without it or, you know, a lot of athletes don't need it, bikini athletes specifically. But um, I do know a lot of us that use them. So um, it's just really, it's your personal preference there. Yeah, I had a girl come to me and she had switched coaches mid prep. And uh, she said, so I had bought all of this. When do I start taking it? And I said, you know, this is your first show. I said, honestly, I wouldn't even consider it until you find out you absolutely like competing because you could do this and you're just like, you know what, Adam, like I, I love training. I love the dieting, but the whole getting on stage thing just was not for me. So, yeah. yeah. Right. And then, you know, and then you spend all that money, one. And then two, it's a whole process of cycling off of them and dealing with any of that, you know, the other stuff that comes along with it. So um. I have no problem with either. I think the biggest thing is when you take somebody and they're brand new and they do do a cycle or two on their very first show, um, you take away the belief that they could do it on their own. And and I think whenever that person wants to get in shape ever again, or, you know, they just want to lose pounds for summer, maybe they're doing a vacation with their family, they're always going to revert back to what they know. And that, that really limits them to that's all they know. And they're like, where do I get clenbuterol to lose weight for summer, you know, and uh, that will always be their philosophy, just like, 
you know, how many people do we know that do Weight Watchers because that's all they know. That's the only way they know how to lose weight. Right. Yep. Yeah. And honestly, I think that um, a lot of competitors um, do use um, enhancements. They call it gear. There's so many names for it. Um, yeah. Uh, really steroids. <laughs> um, but uh, I think a lot of athletes use it um, to uh, compete long term. Um, meaning I know like when I begin to compete, my body literally starts eating itself from that point on. So it's hard for me to maintain muscle um, and hard for me to get, I look at, I, what is it called? Uh, like hypermetabolism, right? Mm -hmm. That's the term. Yeah. Okay. So like my body goes one direction and I, it takes me a long time to turn that sucker around. So, I mean, I think that like, just for like instances like that, um, I think people use that stuff too, just even like as a precaution. I think so, the uh, reason you see that is um, you never look bad in the off season. You just get a little fuller. And uh, we all have different areas we carry body fat. And I would say in your instance, you don't necessarily carry, carry a lot um, subcutaneously under the skin. I think a lot of yours goes intramuscularly. And yeah. uh, that gives that illusion that you're losing muscle, but you're really right. just losing that intramuscular body fat that's woven in between those fibers. And then that creates the maybe lack of fullness initially. Right. Yeah. So, and actually I'm going to have to agree with you there first, like 100%, because I know that when I do come in a little bit overly full, um, when I feel like I've got some, a little bit of water under my skin, you know, a little bit, a little bit fuller, a little bit uncomfortable. Like we said, the judges just love that look on me. And I think it's just because I do have a bikini shape. I'm not just, you know, straight and narrow and, and, you know, sucked dry. So I, you know, that's definitely exactly what it is. So yeah. <laughs> right again, Adam. Um, knowledge. Knowledge is the next thing. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't really even bother talking to someone that doesn't have a certified personal training certification. Like that's just fair and square. Like, and they can only give you training. So that's just, that's just common sense. Um, yeah. uh, it says how many years have they been coaching? Do they have, have any certifications or experience? Have you checked out their website or social media, um, for any of this stuff? Um, next on the list is personalization. So coaches can do universal things, but not everything. You know, we can, we can do a couple different things universally, but everything, 90% of this stuff has got to be custom. Everybody is so different, so different. So, um, if that coach is known for doing universal stuff 24 seven, probably not the best coach. Yep. Um, One thing I always liked was seeing diversity in what the coach um, coaches. So if you maybe see just bikini competitors, like I would dare to say it's just going to be universal. But if you start seeing some women's physique or some bodybuilding, um, and, and there are some differences, obviously, because I know some great people that just do bikini as well, because that's their absolute craft. But um, I know even you, you've prepped men before, and they've done great. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. seeing that diversity, I think, is key, um, because that really does show that somebody doesn't have, you could never give a, a guy, typically a bikini girl diet, you know, and them do well. <laughs> <laughs> I even hate categorizing it that way, but you know, it's just not going to work. Yeah, no, it, it, it just, it, it's not going to, it, the, the approach is completely different. Um, starting at body composition, we can get into like all that, like next, like next episode. Yeah. We can actually, yeah. That would be cool to actually kind of separate female and male and, and size mm -hmm. and shape and division and things like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. We could totally do that. That'd be fun. Um, and then, uh, so I have bullet points under the personalization, um, just like just common stuff. Uh, current, they you know they should be asking what your current diet and training is like when you first start. Um, you know, do you take any vitamins or supplements? Age, height, and weight, allergies, your goals, current photos, medical and health issues, and your show date. 
things like that. Those are just very typical, like general stuff. And then like, there's tons of other stuff that needs to be like, you know, more blood work sometimes, you know, when you're really kind of puzzled and you want to make sure that you're getting to the bottom of the things before you start Think just things like that. Um, and then the coach's current progress and six or the current, the client progresses and successes. So if that, you know, if that coach is, you know, going 50% every single time, probably not ideal. Maybe if you really want to work with them, wait till they have a little bit more experience and have a little bit more of a record, better record. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, and then attentiveness. So um, you'll be able to tell if your coach is going to be reachable and attentive to you by the, res um, by the response time before you're even a client. Um, their social media posts, and if they take the time to answer questions on their social media, and some coaches have personal pages and team pages, you check them both out. Yep. Just to make sure that people are, you know, just that there's conversations happening. Um, there's not just somebody just kind of hiding behind a screen, you know, like you and I will show up to shows, we'll fly across the country to go to shows, you know, things like that. Um, organization. So you want a coach that's organized. So if there's, you know, if there's a coach that's, you know, on social media complaining about their daily lives, that's probably not the best coach for you. Right. <laughs> you know, because they are not very organized. Um, Cause trust me, we have our problems. We have our problems all the time. So. Oh, yeah. And I am, uh, but we just don't post about them. <laughs> my wife gets to hear about all my poor yeah, things. Maybe that's, that's how it's supposed to be. So, <laughs> um, and you have to, whatever image you're looking for, I have here a clean image. You want to you want to represent a good person, and you want them to be able to represent you well too. So it's got to go for a circle, full circle. Yeah, you want to make sure that you click with someone well too, and also, I think uh, them being able to explain the knowledge to you is key. Um, you know, I've really had to talk people off the ledge with blood sugar testing, <laughs> and yeah. they'll ask me why because some people are just a little bit afraid to do it. And uh, I've really had to explain that to people and be like, well, this is why I want you to do this. And, you know, here's how you do it. I've even done it to myself and sent a video to my clients on, this is how you do this. And it wasn't that bad. So it's kind of cool if they see me like get dirty and do it with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, ever since you had um, kind of like, you know, kind of put that idea in my head, <clears throat> I've always just had really good luck with all of that and like my clients and things like that. But when, um, when it comes down to it, that's definitely a good technique to know. So I applied myself immediately and ordered, um, ordered a set, like a kit to do everything with. Um, and I was testing my, you know, my blood glucose when I, as soon as I got up, I would test it, you know, right after a meal, about two hours after a meal and then, uh, before bed and the numbers that like that you, you think you're going to get, you don't get it. It's so crazy. It is really cool to watch and it trends differently as you get leaner. I'm sure you notice those numbers typically go down. Yeah. I mean, and mine have only moved maybe like two or three down, but I, you know, I feel like that's, that's justified in, in uh, the amount of time that it's been since I started doing it. Um, really and also the amount of refeeds that I have and my value um, of my sleep right now. Yes. You haven't been getting much, have you? No, I haven't. But it's okay. I'm still doing good. I'm good. Yes. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so I have bullet points under the, the image. I, it says, uh, do they provide positive feedback? Are they proud of their clients? Do they support their clients? Do they not only focus on the physical aspect, but the, the mental aspect too? So you'll be able to tell like whether it's just money to them or it's just a physique to them, or they want to make sure that you are also feeling good internally and, and, you know, have a good mindset going into everything. Absolutely. Um, for me, I've always been like that because I know as a competitor that it takes a positive mindset in order to really get as far as you possibly can. It really does. Your physique and, you know, your, your career. Yep. Um, and then I have the client success rate. So do they have an ideal success rate or, you know, a better than average success rate? And again, uh, their websites and social media should be able to guide you and kind of show you that um, they should have, you know, they should have transformations. They, you know, the IG stories, uh, Facebook's kind of old news, but people still use Facebook. 
um, IG posts, the websites, everything. Transformations is huge because I know um, certain coaches that just kind of pick up athletes who already look good, you know, and yeah. we see that a lot and it's like they don't have one transformation on their page and uh, right. that's kind of crazy. It's more just acquiring than actual coaching. Right. And just making those fine tweaks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Most often when a, when a really good experience athletes, which is coaches, it's literally just because they're looking for a new pro, approach or, um, or they're just looking for, uh, obviously the new approach because they're just feeling a certain way, or maybe they, their connection with their coach isn't as good as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Those are like the two things that I see from just really, you know, really experienced seasoned athletes moving on to another coach. Man, a hard one that I get on occasion is I will have clients who come to me who say I am too close to my coach for them to take me seriously anymore. It's almost like the friendship is so strong that the coaching relationship has gotten to just be too casual. You know what I mean? And that's been, that's definitely been strange to see a couple times. So I might be losing you on this one. 